What's going on everyone? This is Jay from Review It. So here we are, episode two. Now we have Break 3 built and assembled and ready to get programmed. So let's go ahead and dive down into it and see what this rig can pull out. Alright, so this is going to be doing the software um, AMD driver for RAID 3. Also, I'm going to show you guys how I upload and how I flash the BIOS. Um, I'm not going to go into depth of modding the BIOS. I'm just going to do of loading the BIOS in there. Um, reason for that, um, doing a modded BIOS tutorial and showing step by step, it can be different from multiple different cards. So we're just going to show um, how to mod the BIOS. Um, so the first thing I do is we're on here. Um, I'm doing this off of TeamViewer. The rig is actually at the shop. And I'm doing this from home. So I'm using TeamViewer 13, version 13 to remote into the miner and do everything. Um, as you see here, I use GPU-Z. Um, this is so I can see what type of memory is inside of the GPU that we're going to be flashing. So as you see, it's an 8 gig. Uh, this is a Sapphire RX 580, 8 gigabytes, and it's using the Hisense memory or Hynek memory, whatever you guys want to pronounce it. Um, also, what we have here is Claymore. This is the miner that I use. Uh, we have Display Driver Uninstaller. This is very useful. I will recommend. Um, downloading this I will put all the links down below um, next we have the ATI patcher um, we will be using that as well uh, ATI flash my custom BIOS I did for the Sapphire RX 580 special editions Sapphire tricks um, I don't use MSI afterburner I have not had nothing but issues so I use this um, which is a lot easier and user friendly to use and then we have the AMD blockchain driver and that will also be linked down below so first thing what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run a test run real quick and I wanna show you guys exactly um, what Meg mega hash it gets from factory with the stock bios so um, as you see here it's loading up you're gonna see it's on DAG file 163 this is only one GPU mounted on the miner right now. I like to do every GPU separately um, just so it's not confusing, it's easy to do. And let me show you guys. So, as you see, Claymore is booting up. Um, right now, it is getting about 14.8. Let's see if we get 15 or 15.5 out of it, usually stock. Um, BIOS on the Sapphires get about 15, 14.8 uh, again. So let's see. And let's see if it finds anything. Alright, so 15.5 is about common for those. So after it gets going, that's what the stock BIOS runs at. So right off the bat, we're going to close this out, close this out. First thing, what we're going to do is you're gonna download all the links that I have down below so the links down below is gonna be for the AMD beta blockchain driver that is the one I use on all my rigs I haven't had no issues whatsoever with them and then you're gonna download the ATI plex clock patcher and then also uh, display driver uninstaller that's all gonna be listed down below so the first thing what we're gonna do is we're going to run display driver uninstaller. I actually already did this, so I, you would run this, remove any existing driver that you have installed right now on the computer. So as you do that, you're gonna then boot back into it because it will cycle, uh, boot cycle, and it will take you back to the desktop. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna run the AMD blockchain driver. So as you click on that, you're then going to 
click yes to continue and then it will show the blockchain driver here we're going to install on the SSD that's what I run 120 gig PNY SSD um, you can also do 60 gigs um, I, the 120 gigs I get pretty good price so that's why I stick to them let's see so it's going to go through installing the AMD driver alright <clears throat> so it started the driver we're going to go down and hit accept and install then what I always do, I, I usually do a custom install. The reason for that, I go through here. I don't use audio, so I don't do HDMI audio. Um, and that's going to be it. Um, sometimes it'll show Wattman. Um, I don't install that either. So I just go next. Alright. Um, now it's going to ask you to install Relive. I actually do not do that I hit skip and then I make sure keep system up to date is unchecked now this is gonna be the driver 1730 1029 has been installed that is the driver I use on all the mining rigs I do not run them or keep them up to date the reason why when I did that on rig 1 I had nothing but issues so I've been sticking to this driver and it's been working amazing that is really really good um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and reboot the miner and I will be right back. Alright, so boot it back up and basically you're going to see a thank you for, un uh, for installing Iridium software. Go ahead and close this out. Alright, <clears throat> so what we're going to first do is we're going to come down, go to, to device manager. Alright, seeing the card there. So we have that installed now. Shows one. So as you're back, first thing we're gonna do is then open up ATI Flash. You will have to run it as administrator. So you click on Run as administrator. Hit yes. Bam. So as it pops up, you're gonna see the GPU that's mounted into the motherboard. So I always, always recommend saving your stock BIOS this is a big thing some people will not save it and they'll flash their bios and then can't go back to stock um, yes you have a second bios on there but I would recommend saving both bios I already did this and I, I have a lot of sapphire special editions so they're actually the same bios so I re already have this bios ready saved so after you save the bios we're going to go to load bios and we head on the desktop We'll click there and we're going to load my custom bios so as we see it it loads up here and then we're going to hit program so it will look like it's frozen for a second or two um, I thought when I first did this it bricked or froze the computer um, but yes this is how this program works after you hit program and then it will pop up with a little window saying that your GPU has been programmed and flashed. Alright, so it says your BIOS has was programmed successfully. So what we're going to do is hit OK. It's going to ask, uh, have you rebooted the system before so it can take uh, effects? <clears throat> Not yet. What I always like to do is I like to run the patcher. So right click on the patcher, run as administrator, hit yes and it's going to find some of these it's going to say found patch found values we're going to hit yes drivers uh, successfully patched and signed awesome so then what we're going to do is close this window and then we're going to go ahead and reboot alright so now the system is rebooted so what we're going to do is boom, boom, boom. Let's see, let's run the patcher one more time. I want to see if it finds anything. Awesome, already patched. So we hit no. Now let's open up Claymore. Let's see. Let's run a test run on the GPU and see what it gets. Alright, so right off the bat, 31.1. 
that is awesome so it did take the flash um, so that is how simple it is now I follow this same suit for the rest of the cards every time it asks me to reboot after I flash I run the patcher let it find and patch those files and then I hit reboot and then I plug in another card flash it until I get all the cards done and flashed and then when I what I normally do is put three cards in boot up the unit and basically I let the motherboard see three cards and after it sees three cards in Windows I then go back and I see I actually will enable 4G decoding in the BIOS and plug in another card or two reboot if it sees all five cards then I plug in another one reboot and it, until I get all eight that is the simple step um, you just want to you don't want to plug them all in or it's gonna get an error and it's not gonna boot into Windows um, so you want to do it one by one and reboot it is time consuming but this is the way I do it and it works every single time and I haven't had any issues after it sees all eight GPUs I'm able to reboot the the rigs when I power them down to clean them and then when I power them back on they see all eight GPUs with no issues whatsoever um, so as you guys see it's running 31 mega hashes so what we're gonna do is let's see let's let it sit now fans right now is at 0, 0, 29, 29. Um this is in the shop right now so I am actually at home so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this off so we're gonna close out Claymore and then we're gonna open up uh, let's see Sapphire alright so I always like to hit reset first this is what it's currently at so on this one I actually did this in the BIOS so this one is going to show my GPU clock speed at 1250 my memory clock is at 2200 now on this card it's going to be zero undervolting on this and my power limit is at zero as well now a good thing I like about uh, Sapphire Tricks is you can actually pull this up and you can come down to GPU only power draw so as you open up Claymore and you run it you're gonna see this jump up and then you'll be able to see what your power is per card um, so that is a good feature because you can actually come here to settings and you can select whatever card you want to work on so let's close this out come back here so right now it is a little high it's at 114 so my goal is to get this down to about 80 to let's say 80 to 95 watts um, so let's see to see let it run let it idle out and see what it comes down to now the fan is set up on this one at 75 the reason for that I like to keep them cool as possible um, some people like to run their GPUs a little hotter um, from the research I've been doing and I like to run them as cool as possible I want to keep them below 55 degrees Celsius and below um, the reason for that is you, you're running something 24-7 so you want to keep it as cool as possible uh, it gives you more longevity in the long run so these cards you know I haven't had any issues not a noise or a peep from a fan or anything like that um, running at this I'm not running them full blast um, just at 75 and then they adjust to whatever the temperature goes up it will go up a couple per, uh, percentage to bring it back down so as you see this card starting to fluctuate let's see 104 14 average is about 80 80.9 still going up now 
Now if you guys did want to undervolt the card or take some power out, you can do that here. So let's say if I want to do 10, this one actually probably will not change because this is all done in the BIOS um, on this particular card. So even if I make adjustments here, it won't make any adjustments to the, to the card. So let's see. Yeah, still nothing. Still about the same. So what I would do is go back into that BIOS of this card with Polaris Editor um, and make a couple adjustments to get this down. So we found a share, 31.1, consistent. Um, so now what I recommend is running the card for a good 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. Make sure it doesn't get any type of errors, no overclock errors or anything like that. Um, yes, it is a good thing to do is test runs on each GPU because if I don't do a test run, I put all of them on all at once, um, then it's going to be hard to find out which one's doing it unless you mark each individual GPU. Um, so I like to do it right off the bat, one by one, um, take my time and make sure it's running consistent. Sometimes I'll leave one GPU running about two to three hours just so I know, hey, after it's running at a steady pace it's good to go so there it goes so it's sitting there so average is about 93 watts and right now it's about 112 114 so it'll fluctuate there and I just use the sapphire tricks running in the background um, some of the settings I do on here is I load on Windows startup if I ever boot, reboot the rig um, show effective memory um, let's see boom boom save fan settings to profile that is one thing I do keep and that is it after that I just close this and I minimize this and let it run so there you guys got so GPU Z to verify what type of memory is in your GPU. Claymore Miner is the miner I'm using. Uh, DDU uh, display uh, driver display uninstaller. Run this first thing. You want to uninstall any type of existing driver that you installed. The ATI patcher, which will be linked down below. And then also the ATI flash is what you're going to use to upload the BIOS, the modded BIOS to your card. And then Sapphire Tricks, I would recommend checking that out versus MSI Afterburner. I had a lot of luck with this. And then also this blockchain driver is going to be listed down below as well. So there you guys go. Uh, this is how to flash your BIOS and install the necessary drivers that you need for your mining rig so this is jay with review it and i'll see you guys on the next episode